Hello, Chef Marcus Giuliano here, and I'm your chef on a mission. Today's uh, video topic, a uh, bit different. Uh, need your help responding to a bad review on Yelp. Yeah, uh, bad review. So I was at the restaurant when, when the people were eating. I was sitting at the bar doing work. I'm packing for Vegas right now. I'm leaving for Vegas in about half an hour. And after this couple left, um, a pops a review on my alert and uh, it came in as a two-star review. Let me read the review to you. My partner and I were spending the long weekend up in the Hudson Valley from Brooklyn and chose Aroma Time Bistro for our last meal based upon the glowing reviews. We ignored warning signs. Okay, so we got glowing reviews and warning signs. So, so both, conflict of both here. Uh, <laughs> uh, the menu is disjointed and all over the place. And we went with an open mind. So we had glowing reviews, but yet the menu is disjointed, but there were warning signs. Um, went with an open mind. Our waitress was friendly and set us up in a cute booth. We had a papadam for appetizer. So papadams are an Indian flatbread. Um, papadams are not an exciting food. We have them because a lot of gluten-free people, they're made out of lentil flour and people who can't have bread eat, uh, eat papadams. Plus we have one or two Indian dishes on our menu. So it complements Indian dish. If I went to a restaurant, I would just never order an order of papadams. Um, I do eat papadams as a snack, but I wouldn't, I, I mean, at an Indian restaurant I would. So papadams are not one of our most exciting appetizers by any means. Uh, but they fill a really big gap in our menu because they're gluten-free uh, and we use them as bread. We give them away as bread. If you're gluten-free, we automatically give you papadoms as your bread. So, apart from some uncooked edges, the cilantro sauce was all right and it was good. Then came the mains. I ordered the jerk chicken. It was bland. It was a bland, soggy mess. The rice was overcooked and the vegetables were okay, but the chicken was just sad. It didn't have any spices added in whatsoever. I sent the dish back and chose the raw tuna appetizer as a replacement. Since I lost all faith, all faith in their cooking after that dish. The tuna was pretty good, but it's hard to mess up something that's raw if you source it correctly. So the jerk chicken is a new dish on our menu. It's been on our menu for about a month, a month and a half. Um, we have a top 50 party every year. Uh, where we invite our top 50 guests in. Uh, it's really top 100 because we do top 50 of the lifetime of the restaurant and top 50 of the last year. And it's done through our loyalty program. We know how much you spend when you come in, our members. So we invite our members in to spend the most. So these guests are uh, our VIPs. And we put this dish up back in the beginning of January at one of their uh, receptions. We do a reception every year for our top 50. We invite them in, we give them a bunch of free food and let them taste things and we try out new things and everybody was raving over the jerk chicken. Raving over it, like this is great, put this on the menu, put this on the menu, put this on the menu. So we take a bone-in chicken thigh, we rub it down with a dry jerk rub, we grill it off so it gets a little charred, uh, and then we make a, a jerk sauce um, with onions and tomatoes, canned tomatoes from New Jersey, and um, a famous Jamaican jerk spice paste. And we use that in there and that's how we make it. Um, it can be an extremely hot dish if you use that paste, um, if you use too much of that paste. So we cut back on the paste so it's not, so it's so the average person can eat it, but it has all the spices in it. Um, our rice is cooked in a rice cooker and then we cool it down immediately um, in a big pan. We layer it thin, put it in the wok and cool it down and we re just reheat it on service. But it's a blend of four different rices. Red Wahani rice, brown basmati, short grain rice, and short grain rice, of course, has a different texture than the other. All the rice have different textures. So all we do is take a pan, a uh, stainless steel pan, saute pan, get it, heat it up, just wipe the pan down with a slight amount of oil, just so, just so the pan doesn't stick, uh, the rice doesn't stick to season it for the night, and just saute it in there, and salt and scallions, and that's it. Um, in the 15 years we've been here, I think we've overcooked two batches of rice um, in the whole 15 years. And that's because it gets put in the rice cooker and it gets left in the rice cooker for three, four, five hours afterwards. Your rice cooker cooks the rice and then it kills it down to a warm mode. But if you leave it in there for four or five hours, which isn't safe anyway, uh, the rice will get overcooked. And that's only happened twice in the 15 years we've been here. It's a rice cooker, it's automatic. It gets chilled properly and then it gets reheated. And everybody loves it. People come in and buy our rice uh, to go all the time because they love it. Um, and I actually tasted that rice that night, that batch, um, like I do most batches of rice. I love the rice, and that rice was far from overcooked. Um, so 
you know, what you have here is you have somebody who thinks they're a food critic, which a lot of people do. They just think they're food critics. And they go online and like she couldn't wait. So she orders a jerk chicken. It didn't meet her. It didn't meet what it wasn't what she expected. Okay. Uh, but she trashed the whole dish. It wasn't what she expected, which is fine. Our food is not for everybody. Every, you might like 90% of our food and 10% you might not like or vice versa. Um, so, but we quickly replaced it. We took it away. No questions asked. We have a 100% guarantee policy. Thank you for saying something, first of all, because we want you to eat something you have, you know, eat, like something that, you, that that's in front of you. And she orders the tuna. Now, the tuna, she says, is easy to cook. The tuna is not easy to cook. The tuna is one of the hardest dishes because you have to go get a smoking hot pan, um, the smallest amount of oil, and you have to just sear, 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 and take it off. If you don't do that, uh, the tuna will overcook. Uh, they're small tuna loins. It's not. It's. It's not a. It's not the easiest dish to do. A lot of my chefs in the past. Every single one of my chefs in the past has overcooked that dish. Overcooked the tuna. The batch of them, at least once or twice in their in their experience in aroma time. It's usually at the beginning. And once they're trained properly, even when you train them properly, they 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 don't realize that ten seconds makes a difference on that dish. And that's that's really crucial. Um, so it's in and out of the pan, smoking hot pan. And I have a guy who's been with me. 12 years, and I just told him the other day, I said, you're using too much oil and you're using the wrong pan, you're gonna overcook those. And he's been doing it for years. So he switched pans and you know, it's one of those things. So it's not it's not the, one of the easiest dishes to do in our kitchen. Um, but the thing was, she didn't like it. We replaced the dish right away. We gave her whatever she wanted. We, of course, we took the dish off her bill. Um, but it's like, she couldn't wait to leave the restaurant. I mean, she left the restaurant and literally within 30 minutes, we had this bad review in our inbox. She probably even wrote it while she was at the restaurant. Uh, her partner ordered the veggie bowl, was one of the few items on the menu that did not have a bizarre twist. The veggie bowl is an Asian dish. Now, she's Asian. Uh, her name is Grace K. Uh, they're, um, when we proofed them, when my waitress proofed them there, their stuff was from Korea, somewhere in Korea, their license and everything. She says she's from Brooklyn. Now, the neat thing is, you know, well, the part that sucks actually is a lot of these people hide under aliases when they go on Yelp and TripAdvisor. Now, she puts her real name and she has a picture of her, her uh, you know, a photo picture, a profile picture. And I just took that picture, I swiped it off of Yelp and I swiped it into Google Images and I was able to come up uh, with, with who she was. And you can see right there because a lot of people use the same image pro, uh, images other places. So I just basically... You uh, swiped it into a, 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 a photo search. Um, it wasn't Google, it was something else, a photo search. And up popped her information. So I can see exactly who she is. So she's not hiding. But a lot of people go in and they hide under these aliases um, and just trash restaurants. So she's not hiding. Um, the rest of her review. So the veggie bowl, you know, is, I mean, it says on our tagline, our restaurant, um, small footprint, global flavors. We have a very global menu. We have Indian, we have Japanese. We have American, we have meatloaf, we have burgers, we have Italian, we do Oktoberfest every year, which is a huge success. We're getting ready to do Greek Heritage Month. So our menu is all over the place, but the one consistent thing about our food is it's wholesome food. It's pure wholesome food. Um, it's not um, it's not commodity food. All of, most of our beef comes local. Uh, the beef that doesn't come local is a grass-fed product from New Zealand. Uh, we use a ton, a ton of farms. We're using fresh broccoli. We're still using a ton of fresh produce right now. So she makes a comment about the about the vegetables. Um, it tasted like a simple stir fry. Someone had wiped, whipped up using spare vegetables in a few minutes. A far cry from the twenty dollar menu. Well, those spare vegetables happen to be fifty dollar a case broccoli, fifty dollar a case cauliflower, local organic kale, and the cauli and the broccoli and the cauliflower are GAP certified. So it's a it's a, it's a high quality um, product from a local greenhouse grower. The mushrooms are local grown organic from Bulick Farms. Um, the onions come from Daigle Farms, which is down the road in Goshen, in the black dirt, which is the best onion soil in, in the country. Um, so she's using some of those warning signs. And she said she came with an open mind, but I don't believe she did come with an open mind. Things we did like, free bread. She liked the free bread. Um, so maybe it's a price point with this person. If you notice, if you go on to um, reviews, of, I've gone to reviews that people don't like us, it's usually because of the price. It's a price that they don't like. Um, now, $20 for a hot pot with tofu or whatever and a sauce and organic brown rices like that, and all organic vegetables, 
is totally in the ballpark of a of a reasonable price. It's a great presentation. The pot comes out sizzling. Uh, the sauces that we use, we use a Sanjay. Sanjay makes great sauces. We use their Szechuan sauce and their Thai peanut sauce. They're gluten free. They're made with great ingredients. There's no refined, like there's no white sugar in it. No corn syrup in it by any means. There's no fillers like that. It's they're awesome, awesome products. So for what she's getting, twenty dollars is a very good price. Um, Attentive service, they like the expansive wine and liquor selection, attentive service, and they like the decor. So she had one dish that, she, that she's complaining about, um, and she ordered the papadoms, which is not you know indicative of, of, I mean, there's so many things she could have ordered on our menu. Um, and the funny thing is, she, after she left the table next to her, um, after I read this review, the table next to her is like, your food is amazing. The flavors are so vibrant. We're having such a great time here. It's our first time here. And you know, they ordered like the chickpea and Indian dish, which was a vegetarian dish. I ordered a couple other things. She's like, your flavors are so vibrant. Food is so subjective. It's so subjective. But here's the problem. This person goes online, trashes us in a two-star review. Um, other people, when they look at restaurants, say these reviews matter. The, the, these reviews affect our business. These reviews affect the hard work that we're trying to do. The thing was, if that was in the situation, and 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 they replaced the food and they were nice and everything was nice, why even write something bad about the place? It's not like we weren't trying. We're totally trying. We're going above and beyond what most places would do. Most most places they don't even come back and check and see if your food's okay. I've been to amazing restaurants where they've sent stuff out overcooked and I'll sit there for 20, 25 minutes and the waiter won't even come back, the waitress won't even come back. And I'm like, the food is not, and it's like, you just sit there and wait, and wait, wait. We were so on top of this table. We got the, we got the tuna out right away. Um, and then she comes up with this two star review and I have no recourse of like, but now because I've searched, I know who she is. Yeah, I know she is, she's not hiding. But it just sucks because all this hard work we do, so this affects our business. This affects our livelihood and people do reviews like this and they think they're food critics. Um, you know, and the farms that we buy from and, and you know, she, she, for us to say that we got glowing reviews but there were warning signs. So you got glowing reviews but you got warning signs all at the same time. Um, I'm not sure how that exactly works uh, and, and, you know, but it's bottom line is it just sucks and all I have to do some politically correct response now on, on Yelp saying, you know, um, you know, sorry, you didn't like this and that. And we apologize and this and that. And, you know, and this person, I feel this person's being very picky, extremely picky. Um, we fixed the problem. Everything else is fine. Um, you know, <laughs> she made, she made those warning signs into a place, into a thing like, well, I don't trust the kitchen now. I don't trust the kitchen now. There's so many things you overlooked in the kitchen. Um, and it's just, it's just, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's all like this is mind blowing. So how, if you were a business owner, how would you respond to this? Now, when I go on Yelp and I look at people's reviews, restaurant reviews, I actually purposely go to the bad reviews first. I go to the bad reviews first because I can tell because anybody can write a good review and say this place is awesome and, and we, we, we don't have the same style of, men, of style of taste. But I go to the bad reviews and I look and see how legitimate they are. And you can tell a legitimate review right off the bat route. Like, I hope that people would go to here and say, this lady, what's going on with this lady? This is like crazy. Like, like she's, a lot of people say to us, you know, I read your, a couple of your bad reviews. I saw your responses. And that made me come into your restaurant because I see you responded because I saw that person was just crazy. And that person has no idea what they're talking about. So I use that same principle. Go look at the bad reviews and see how crazy these people are. You'll see some legitimate bad reviews and you'll see some, some just total people that just, just think they're food critics and want to critique every single thing. And I feel this person's trying to be a food critic here um, and not being able to just, just come in and enjoy their meal. We fixed it, just enjoy your meal. That's the bottom line. We'll, we would have made you whatever you wanted, but to make it out like this and to, and to sit there and probably just being, I can't wait to write this review, this two-star review, this two, I mean, she literally, Yelp has a filtering process where you know you have to submit it and then it gets sent to the owner, which probably takes a half an hour. So she probably wrote this in the parking lot on the way back to the Airbnb, wherever they were staying, or even in the restaurant she probably wrote it. I mean, if it was that bad of a thing, speak up and say something to me. Say it to me. I said goodbye to them. I said good night, and you could tell she put her head down and walked right. He didn't, and he just was like looked at me really quickly and good night and walked right out the door. You can tell that they were just there was something socially wrong about the picture. Leave your comments. Uh, am I right? Am I wrong? Thanks for watching, and uh, until next video.